chapter eleven of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva discord that afternoon late berkeley and the rays returned to town and the western wires tingled with jeff's telegrams to pueblo kinney and mesa city he had burnt his bridges behind him and like a skilful cavalry leader was picking out the vantage points in the enemy's country the answers came slowly but ray had planned his campaign before he left the west and the messages were satisfactory he realized that his utility in new york for the present at least was at an end and he saw that he must soon leave for the west to repair any possible break in his line of communications camilla learned of his intended departure with mingled feelings her husband's rather ostentatious deference to mrs cheyne had annoyed her she knew in her heart that she had no right to cavil or to criticize and pride forbade that she should question him larry's presence at dinner precluded personal discussions and camilla sat silent while the men talked seriously of jeff's business plans it had not been her husband's habit to discuss his affairs with her and when the coffee was served he asked her coolly if she wouldn't rather be alone don't you mind if i stay jeff she asked i'd like to hear if you don't mind i'd rather you wouldn't you can't be interested in this besides the matter is rather important and confidential she got up quickly larry berkeley who had caught the expression in her eyes opened the door for her and followed her into the drawing-room don't be annoyed camilla he whispered jeff is worried you understand don't you oh yes i understand she replied wearily don't mind me as the door closed behind him she stood irresolute for a moment then suddenly realized she had been up since dawn and was very tired her body ached and her muscles were sore but the weariness in her mind was greater than these the closing of the dining-room door had robbed her of the refuge she most needed she wanted to talk to hear them talk anything that would banish her own thoughts anything that would straighten out the disorderly tangle of her late impressions of the new life and the people she had met in it she had never thought of jeff as sanctuary before and yet she now realized when the support of his strength was denied her that in her heart she had always more or less depended upon him for guidance and yet she feared him too a while ago she had been filled with horror at his share in the lone tree affair and since that time the knowledge had haunted her but she had not dared to speak of it to him she felt instinctively that this was one of the matters upon the other side of the gulf that had always yawned with more or less imminence between them their relations were none too stable to risk a chance of further discord the difference in his manner which she had noticed a week or more ago had become more marked and to-night at the dinner-table he had troubled less than usual to disguise his lack of interest in her opinions the image of court was ever in her mind and the danger that threatened her seemed no less distant than before and yet she still hoped as she had always done that something would happen some miracle some psychological crisis which would show her husband and herself the way to unity since she had seen cortland bent she had lost some faith in herself gained some fear of jeff whose present attitude she was at a loss to understand but she still clung desperately to the tattered shreds of their strange union though lately even those seemed less tangible to-night when she had asked him to take her west with him he had refused her impatiently almost brusquely she went into her own room slowly and undressed as she sat before her mirror the sight of the scratch on her face recalled the incidents of the day mrs cheyne 
her lips drew together her brows tangled in thought and she dismissed her maid who had come in to brush her hair what right had jeff to ignore her as he had done no matter what her own shortcomings in public at least she had always shown him a proper respect and had never in her heart dishonored him by an unworthy thought for one brief moment in cortland bent's arms she had been swept from the shallows into deeper water but even then she had known as she knew now that loyalty to jeff had always been uppermost in her thoughts they must have an understanding before he went away she would not be left here in new york alone she had learned to distrust herself to distrust jeff court and all the charming irresponsible people of the gay set into which they had been introduced in her dressing-gown she sat before her fire and listened to the murmur of voices in the drawing-room from which he had been banished she could hear jeff's steps as he rose and paced the floor his voice louder and more insistent than larry's there was a coming and going of pages delivering and receiving telegrams and she felt the undercurrent of a big crisis in jeff's career the nature of which she had only been permitted to surmise his attitude had wounded her pride it hurt her that larry should see her placed in the position of a petitioner her one comfort was the assurance that she did not care what jeff himself thought of her that it was her pride which insisted on a public readjustment of their relations camilla got up slowly thoughtfully and at last moved to the bell determinedly to her maid she said tell mr ray i'd like to see him before he goes out when ray entered the room later a frown on his face the cloud of business worry in his eyes he found camilla asleep on the divan under a lamp a magazine on the rug beside her where it had fallen from her fingers his lips had been set for short words but when he saw her he closed the door noiselessly behind him even sleep could not diminish the proud curve of the nostrils or change the firmly modeled chin and the high clearly penciled brows jeff looked at her a moment his face showing some of the old reverence the old awe of her beauty and while he looked she stirred uneasily and murmured a name he started so violently that a chair beside him scraped the floor and awoke her i must have oh it's you jeff you wanted to see me he asked harshly yes i she sat up languidly i did want to see you there are some things i want to talk about some things i want explained sit down won't you i i haven't much time i won't keep you long you've decided to go west without me yes next week perhaps sooner if i want you to change your mind about taking me with you why i want to go jeff laughed disagreeably <laughs> you women are funny for a year you've been telling me that the only thing you wanted was a visit to new york now you're here you want to go back i've told you to get all the clothes you need hired you an apartment in the best hotel given you some swell friends bought you jewelry i don't want jewelry or clothes or friends she insisted i want to go back and watch them build glen irwin they've stopped working on glen irwin i wanted the money that was going into that oh i've a big fight on and i need all the capital i can swing glen irwin will have to wait he finished grimly of course i didn't understand but it makes no difference i can stay at the hotel or at mrs brennan's after all this oh no you'd be miserable besides i have other plans you don't want me no i'll be very busy no busier than you were before we came here jeff paced the length of the room and returned before he answered her see here camilla you ought to know by this time that when i say a thing i mean it i'm going west alone to do some fence building you're to stay here and do the same thing socially 
I need these people in my business, and I want you to keep on good terms with them. She gazed thoughtfully at the fire. Don't you believe me when I say I want to go with you? Jeff made an abrupt movement. Well, hardly. We've always got along pretty well, so long as each of us followed our own pursuits. But I think you might as well acknowledge that you don't need me, haven't needed me now or at any other time. I do need you, Jeff. I want to try and take a greater interest in your affairs, to help you if I can, socially, if necessary, but I'd rather do it with you than alone. I may not be gone long, perhaps only a week or so. In the meanwhile, you're your own mistress. You've always let me be that, but I have reasons for wanting to leave New York. Ray turned and stared at her blankly. Reasons? Yes, I... I'm a little tired. The life here is so gay. I'm unused to it. It bewilders me. I think I understand, he said slowly, but it can't be helped. I want you to cultivate the McIntyres, the Warringtons, and the Rumsons. Larry will stay here in the hotel for a while. You can call on him. She fingered the pages of a book beside her. Then this is final? she asked. Yes, you must do as I say. He had never before used that tone with her. The warm impulse that had sought this interview was dried at its source. Very well, I'll stay, she said coldly, no matter what happens. He examined her shrewdly. You're afraid? he asked. That's too bad. I thought I was doing you a service. What do you mean? Court Bent. That's what I mean. Court Bent. He's yours. I give him to you. Jeff! She rose and faced him trembling, and her eyes flickered like a guttering candle as she tried to return his look. How could you? she stammered. How could you speak to me so? But he was merciless. Oh, I'm not blind. I'm not deaf, either. I've seen and I've heard. But I didn't need to see her here. Don't you suppose I've always known you married me out of spite, out of pique? because court bent wouldn't marry you i knew it then just as i know it now but i hoped i could win you back and the things would be the same as they were before he came meddling in my affairs well you know what happened better than i do our marriage has been a failure i was a fool so were you we've made the best of a bad job but that don't make it a good job i let you go your own way i've been good to you because i knew i'd been as big a fool as you were what i didn't know was that you'd met court bent behind my back that's not true she broke in that day he called here don't explain impatiently it won't help matters i'm not blind the main fact is that you've seen court bent again and that you're still in love with him these people are talking about you who mrs Chain? yes mrs Chain and others camilla steadied herself with a hand upon the table the brutality of his short sharp indictment unnerved her for the moment she had hoped he would have given her the opportunity to make an explanation in her own way a confession even which if he had willed might have brought them nearer in spirit than they had ever been but that was now impossible every atom of him breathed antagonism and the words of her avowal were choked in the hot effusion of blood which pride and shame sent coursing to her throat and temples and if i am still in love with him she said insolently what then he looked at her admiringly for scorn became her oh nothing he said with a shrug only be careful that's all back in mesa city i thought of shooting court bent but i found a better way to punish him here he laughed i've a different plan i'm going to give you a free foot i'm going to throw you two together to give you a chance to work out your salvation in your own way your marriage to me means nothing to you time has proved that you and i are oil and water we don't mix we never have mixed there isn't any reason that i can see that we're ever going to mix we've worried along somehow to date but it's getting on my nerves i'd rather we understood each other once and for all 
i'm past changing you knew what i was a queer weed a mongrel i took root and i grew as nature made me grow in the soil i fell in hardy thick-ribbed stubborn and lawless the world was my enemy but i fought it as nature taught by putting on a rough bark and spines like the cactus that grew beside me oh i grew flowers too pretty pale blossoms that tried to open to the sun you had a chance to see them but they weren't your kind you looked beyond them at the hothouse plants don't jeff she pleaded i can't bear it but he only laughed at her well i've brought them to you the roses the orchids the carnations and you're going to live with them in the atmosphere you've always wanted won't you let me speak no he thundered my mind is made up i'm going west alone you go your way i go mine is that clear you and cortland bent can meet when and where you please i don't want to meet him she whispered brokenly i don't want to see him again i can't believe you he sneered we've lived a lie since we were married let's tell the truth for once in our lives when i came in this room you were asleep but even while you slept you dreamed of him and his name was in your mouth the face she turned up to him was haggard but her eyes were wide with wonder i heard you you were calling for court i'm not going to be a fool any longer he turned away from her and went toward the door while she got up with some dignity and walked to the fireplace you're going to mrs cheyne she asked coldly if i like defiantly this game works both ways yes i see there's some method in your madness after all i don't see why you should care since i don't object to bent mrs cheyne is a friend of mine she's investing in my company evidently with scorn no doubt you make it profitable to her we won't talk about mrs cheyne you don't like her i do you like court bent i don't and there we are we understand each other it's the first time in our lives we ever have i don't question you and you're not to question me all i ask is that you hide your trail as i'll hide mine i have some big interests at stake and i don't want any scandal hanging around my name or yours i'm giving you into the hands of my enemies the father wants to ruin my business the son to ruin my wife i'll fight general bent with his own weapons the son you're insulting she broke in will you go he turned at the door his face pale with fury yes i'll go and i won't bother you again these rooms are yours when i'm here mine are there some day when i'm ready i'll get you a divorce then you can marry as you please as for me he finished passionately i'm done with marriage done with it you understand and the door crashed between them camilla stood for a moment tense and breathless staring wide-eyed at the pitiless door then the room went whirling and she caught at the chair at her desk and sank into it helplessly one hand pressed against her breast for a moment she could not think could not see even the brutality of his insults had driven her out of her bearings why he had not struck her she could not imagine for it was in the character of the part he was playing he had not given her a chance he must have seen that she was trying to repair past damages and begin anew a throb of self-pity that was almost a sob came into her throat tears gathered in her eyes and pattered on the desk before her she did not notice them until she heard them fall and then she dried her eyes abruptly as though in shame for a weakness he did not want to begin anew she could see it all clearly now he was tired of her and caught at the easiest way to be rid of her by putting her in the wrong her strength came quickly as she found the explanation and she sat up rigidly in her chair her face hot with shame and resentment she deserved something better from him than this all that was worst in her clamored for utterance with a quick movement of decision she reached forward for a pen and paper and wrote rapidly a scrawl 
then rang the bell for her maid have this note mailed at once it was addressed to cortland bent End of chapter eleven